There might be a good question, even though Azure provides DNS services, there are several reasons why someone might run their own DNS server on a VM. For example, legacy application requirements. Some older applications or enterprise software might require a specific DNS server features, configurations, or behavior that Azure Managed DNS doesn't support. These apps might have been designed expecting a traditional Windows DNS server or bind configuration. For example, advanced DNS features. You might need capabilities like conditional forwarding to a specific external DNS servers, DNS-based load balancing, uh, custom DNS policies, and so on. A VM-based DNS server gives you all complete control over these advanced features. Hybrid connectivity and control. In complex hybrid scenarios, you might want a DNS server in Azure that acts as a forwarder or intermediary between on-premise DNS infrastructure and Azure. This gives you more granular control over DNS query routing and caching behavior than Azure default DNS forwarders provide. Active Directory Domain Services. If you are running Active Directory Domain uh, Controller in Azure VMs, uh, common for enterprise extending their own promises uh, to Azure AD and to the cloud. Those DCs inherently act as a DNS servers. AD relies heavily on DNS for domain services. So you are essentially required to run DNS on those VMs. Cost optimization. For very high query volumes or specific scenarios, running your own DNS server might be more cost effective than Azure DNS per query pricing model, uh, though this is relatively rare. Compliance or regulatory requirements. Some organizations have strict requirements uh, about where DNS data is processed or logged and need full control over DNS infrastructure to meet compliance standards. The trade-off is that you are now responsible for maintaining, patching, and ensuring high availability of those DNS servers, whereas Azure's managed DNS handles that for you. In our demo for today, uh, we will deploy a virtual network and then three virtual machines in the network uh, one of the virtual machine, we turn it to an IIS server, let's say a web server, and the other one is just a client that calls the web server to download an HTML page. And first we try it with a private IP address. And then the next step is that we turn the third uh, virtual machine to a DNS server, and, we, and then we create a record uh, with a domain like website.demo.local and then we try uh, again with our a client's virtual machine to send a request with that uh, newly created dns to see if we are able to download the html page we will go through the full uh, setup step by step and i will show you how it works let's dive in okay i'm logged in in azure and let's create our resources First of all, uh, let's create a resource group, which is called RG Demo in West Europe. Let's create our virtual network. We call it VNet Demo. Click next. Here I will uh, change the name of the subnet to SNET VM DNS. I will add two other subnets. V uh, sorry SNET VM IIS. And another one, SNET VM client for our client virtual machine add. 
and we create the network. Okay, the network is created and now let's deploy our virtual machines. Here. Create a virtual machine. Our newly created virtual machine, we call this VM IIS. West Europe, uh, no availability zone is needed. We go with uh, Windows uh, Server 2022 data center. And the size, I will go with the standard one. the username admin user and a password here i just want to also open the http port because we are going to turn this uh, virtual machine to a web server we go to the next, everything remains as default. In the virtual network uh, option, it is already selected or created virtual network. We put this virtual machine to the SNET IIS and we go to management, monitoring, I disable it and then create. The resource is created. Let's go there and connect. Download the RDP file. I'm logged in into the server. From the add role and features, we click next, next, next. We choose web server IIS, add feature, next. We leave everything as default and click install. Okay, the installation is finished. And now uh, let's give it a try. I will hit the IP address 10, 0, 1, 4. Okay, the web server is running. Now let's see if we can change the content of the HTML file. Let's go to the C drive. Here. Here. IIS start. Right click open with notepad. I have here a very basic HTML content that I copy paste here, save it. Let's give it a try with the refresh. Yes, so this will be our custom HTML page that we are going to call from the VM client. Let's go and deploy our VM client. Here, uh, we go to the virtual machines. Create a new one to our resource group. It is a VM client. We don't need availability zones. We go uh, with the same image, Windows Server 2022. And the size also is the same. Admin user for the username. And also I will give a password here.
great. Everything else remains the same. We go to the networking. Uh, we, we would like to have this virtual machine in the SNET uh, client, which is already there. And we just go to management, monitoring, disable the monitoring and create. Validation is passed and then I hit the create button again. Okay, the deployment is finished. Now let's go to the resource and try to uh, connect. I would like to see if we are able to reach our IAS server from this machine. First with the private IP address. I am logged in in the server and let's see if we can access uh, VM IIS from VM client with the private IP address of VM IIS. So here, 10, 0, 1, and 4. And we have access now uh, to our IIS uh, VM successfully. And the next step is that uh, we go and we deploy our DNS virtual machine. But before that, let's try uh, this domain website uh, demo.local. And now if we enter, uh, we don't get anything. And this is what we are going to fix next. Here, we go to the virtual machine again, create. The steps are identical with the previous VM DNS. No need for availability zone. And the image, also the size, uh, the same. Admin user, provide a password. We go to networking and we choose here the DNS subnet. Then click management, monitoring, we disable it. We hit create. Okay. Now let's go to the resource and RDP to the server. Okay, I'm logged in in the server and first we need to install the DNS server role. We click next. And here we choose the DNS server. Continue, next. Okay, great. Now we have the DNS server installed and let's configure it. Okay, here from the tools menu, we click on DNS. And here under the forward uh, lookup, we add a new primary zone. We call it demo.local. Next. and finished. Now we have our uh, DNS zone and the next step is to create a DNS record that points to our web server. 
here we uh, right click and we add a new host we call it website and our ip address was 10.0.1.4 and we added this host it is successfully added done perfect we now have a dns record when someone asks for a website demo local our dns server will will respond with a 10.0.1.4 okay let's go back to our vm client and configure the dns there okay so here we are I search here for control panel then network and internet we here change the adapter settings properties internet protocol version 4 and we click properties here we use uh, the following dns server address which is 10 0 0 4 and we click ok close close with that in place we should be able to uh, resolve the dns let's give it a try now and boom we got it we were successfully able to turn a virtual machine to a dns server and we saw that how we can do that and configure it uh, to be able to have our custom uh, private dns zone in azure i have a dedicated video regarding to azure private dns zones so if you are interested about how to set up and configure that you can check it out from the link is here and i would like to thank you for watching and see you in the next video bye